Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is a man who is a quarterback coach in the NFL for 20-some years. Woo. Now he is working at North Carolina as a quarterback consultant, advisor, a man who's not allowed on the practice field, but certainly allowed in the meeting room. Yeah. A wealth of knowledge as he's worked with Tom Brady, what? Peyton Manning, what? Andrew Locke, what? Yeah, and Johnny Unitas and he, same age. Oh, Ladies geez. and gentlemen, Coach Clyde Christensen. Yeah. Coach, good to see you, pal. Good to be back with you. Good to see you guys. Hey, you're a college coach now as opposed to an NFL. You look good. You were good. You were good. You were good. Why are you moving? You're perfect. You're perfect. You're perfect. Right there. You're perfect. Uh, you're you're back in college now as opposed to two and a half decades or so in the NFL. And the quarterback that you get to work with at your alma mater is a man named Drake May. Okay, He's very tall. I got a chance to meet him in person. I was alarmed by how tall he was. He's very big. He's brought up. I was alarmed with how jacked he was. He led the team in rushing, I believe, a couple years back. And now, Last year. Yeah, yep. now he's being talked about as, you know, maybe the third overall pick or top pick in this upcoming draft class. As a man who knows the NFL very well, knows great quarterback play in the NFL very well, what do you see from Drake Bay that you think will translate in the NFL? And what are your thoughts on him? Uh, as an NFL prospect, as we're one day away from the NFL draft spectacular. Yeah, I'm extremely high on him. I, you know, I've had a privilege to be around a couple of number one picks. I really think this guy is is a, is a number one pick type of guy. He's got, he, you know, he's got a ton of skills. I think his best football is still ahead of him. Um, he's going to be one of those guys who just gets better and better and better and better. He has a lot of the traits that those guys who last a long time have. He, he gets along with his teammates. He's a stable guy. He's you know, he, he, I think he's really, really good. I think there's a bunch of great football ahead of him and uh, have told anyone who'd listen that I, I really do think he, he, he should or could easily be the top pick in the whole draft. Now, you have to say that people would think because you're North Carolina alma mater and yeah. you're his advisor and everything like that, but I don't think, and this is just for me to throw myself into the position, my relationship with Clyde Christensen, I don't think he would throw himself to saying he wouldn't be going no. above and beyond to tell me, hey, this is a guy for me to say on the no, show. No, this, yeah. this is a special guy and I, I've always, you know, your words mean a lot and uh, your reputation means a lot and and uh, you know, I, I really, I probably am prejudiced. I do love the kid and the family and everything about him, but uh, I do think he's he's really special and has a chance to really play great football for a lot of years. This, this is a guy who you, you could build your friend. A lot of those teams that need a quarterback up at the top, and a lot of it's who can you build it around, who can, who can you know, who, who, who can represent your team in the community, who can hang tough, who can make it through some tough times. And this kid, this kid has those kind of traits. He, he has an ability to, he's going to be there for a long time if he can learn to He's a little bit like Andrew that he's got to learn to protect himself a little bit. He plays a little reckless like most of these college guys do nowadays. But, gosh, I just think it's it's ahead of him. And uh, and uh, I just – some of the things I've heard out in the media, I don't know if they haven't watched film or whatever. But in my mind, this guy's this guy, this guy's pretty darn special. He's a six four and a half kid who's a really good athlete, really good athlete. And, uh, and uh, so I, I, he processes information – very very fast and and I think probably the the thing you always look like look at as a quarterback is he going to get along with the team are they going to play for him and the great ones that I've been around all have that ability that their their teammates respect and and play for him and uh, and this guy has that this is an extremely popular kid and comes from a great family another trait that the the three great ones the great ones that I've been around from Hasselbeck to Manning to Luck to Brady they all have great families they come from good families and uh, I don't know if that's a prerequisite or not but it certainly has been a trend for me that they just come from stable good families with good mom and dad and uh, and this kid would be no different this is this, this guy comes from four brothers and just has competed all his life and and loves football loves loves everything about football yeah and you're not saying anything about anybody else whenever you're talking up Drake May mm -hmm. you're just pointing out why you believe Drake May is going to transcend into the men's league in a great fashion one last question for me and I know Darius got to meet that entire family you're talking about at a golf event yeah. and uh he loved the way his brothers were shit talking him which is like a part oh, I think they... of what you're talking about with the whole being liked by his team but like my last question is they're all saying he's going to need at least a year this guy's going to have to develop on his technique his fundamentals his footwork his arm, everything like that. Is that every person that goes in the NFL would uh, think, benefit from a year? Yeah, I think everyone would benefit. No one, you know, these top picks don't get that. And I do think this is a guy who's coachable and 
you know, he's going to do exactly what the coaches say. He's going to be extremely compliant. He wants to be great. You know, he's, he's, he, you know, I, I, I just don't think it's going to take a year. I don't, I don't agree with some of the folks who said that may, you know, I think footwork, you know, just system wise, he's going to get in, if he can get in a good system and they're going to coach him and he's going to, you know, a lot of the college thing is just tempo and, uh, and a lot of tempo and a lot of, a lot of plays, you know, and this guy's, this guy's a bright, bright, bright guy. This guy's, Reminds me of Peyton as far as processing information. No, but they both okay. have that southern accent, so, yeah. you know, it's They hard. do have a southern accent, but I, and I wouldn't put any – I certainly wouldn't put him in Peyton's category yet. He's got to do a lot before that. But, I, but uh, you know, processing information, getting along with teammates, being able to do it through hard times and good times, handling both as a quarterback is huge in the NFL because it's a unique position, and it buckles. I, I don't – you know, I was looking at a stat the other day that – under 50% of the first round picks hit and make it to a second contract with their same team. It's unbelievable. 46%, I think, or four, I think it was for QBs. Yep. Yeah, for so, quarterbacks and wide receivers, even lower than that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would say that, that uh, coaches and media alike haven't, haven't cornered the market on evaluating these <laughs> quarterbacks and figuring this thing out correctly. But, uh, you know, I. I, I I'm, high, I'm high, high, high on this guy. I, I think he's a can't miss guy, and I, I really I think it'll be. Be a guy that someone will take and build their whole franchise around. And, I love to hear you know. that. I, I, I know North Carolina fans love to hear that. Drake May has to hear that and be pumped. And also, whoever ends up getting him has yeah. to be pumped to hear this is his guy who's been with him for two years. And once again, and I like that you threw Hasselbeck in there because you're damn Hasselbeck played a long time. Yeah. We're talking about Hasselbeck, Luck, Manning, Brady. Damn. Who this guy's been around. So like, at, yeah, that was at, uh, that was at Peyton's Hall of Fame uh, party. And then there's a couple other photos where him and Tom are incredibly sweaty. Mm-hmm. I mean, just oh. sweating their asses off, getting after it up there in Canton, Ohio. But like, these are obviously heavy words coming from you. Yep, there it is. Let's sweat all over this place with our Super Bowl rings <laughs> at the Hall of Fame and uh, celebrate at the Super Bowl party. But like, as soon as Darius met him, yeah. literally the next day, Darius at Radio Row was like, "I'm taking Drake May number one <laughs> after." Playing around a golf with them. Go ahead, D. Bud. Yeah, uh, like Pat mentioned, got a, got a chance. Uh, Super Bowl week out there in Vegas. We got paired up yeah. with Phil, and his dad was out there. His uncle, and obviously, when you're golfing, somebody's spending four hours. You're going to see him deal with some adversity. You're going to see some shitty shots if you're not getting paid to do that. But I came back to the board. I said, Hey, this might be the guy because everybody at the top, especially when you're talking about talent. Your splint hairs, Caleb, Jaden, Drake, they're all super talented. But day one, I think the locker room will kind of be behind this guy. Any examples, I guess, with you uh, behind the scenes with Drake, maybe dealing with some adversity, coming back to school, dealing with some things maybe on the field or off the field that you saw firsthand? Yeah, I think, I think you know, um, the injury, he got the high ankle sprain in, in uh, the NC State game where we played poorly. And, uh, you know, just watching him deal with that. I think watching him, even just how steady he's been through this process and a lot of the media hasn't liked him and been some negative things out there. And just, he, it, it, you know, just he has that ability. Just it doesn't it doesn't penetrate. You know, he just kind of just keeps moving and keeps doing his deal. And and uh, so I, I think that would be one thing. I think the other thing that jumped out at me when I first got here after, you know, I came this year and, and just kind of Coach Brown took me in and said, hey, you know, help us out and we'll find some roles for you and hang around. And uh, and uh, but but. A couple of the big boys came after him in the portal with a bunch of money, and he he walked into Coach Brown's office and said, "Hey, I'm, this is my school. This is you know, I'm not I'm not leaving here for money. I'm not I am not leaving here, you know, in the portal or anything like that." And I think he had a chance to go make a couple extra million dollars, and mm. and uh, and that shows you something. There's not many kids who just this is their school. This is this is, you know they're they're you know rah rah for your school, and you're going to stay with it, and no matter what. And I think you know he played. He backed up for a year or two and, and then waited his turn. So I, I think those are good characteristics to have in your quarterback. So Could you imagine, though, he goes to Ohio State? Oh, my <laughs> God. Ohio State was driving on Michigan to beat him in the mm-hmm. in the big house up yeah, there in Michigan, and there was a pick, obviously. Mm-hmm. That guy's now uh, transferred. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That guy was almost undefeated, McCord. <laughs> no, it's – Throw it's a pick, you're gone. See, get the hell out of town. But there was a lot of people that were thinking, you know, Drake May was going to be on the market because North Carolina, ACC, yep. more, they're maybe not yep. going to spend the money. And what I think he told us whenever we had the game day for North Carolina and South Carolina is he didn't want to look at it. Like, I don't even want to hear about it. I don't even want to know. Yeah, I want to be no. here. His family's obviously NC and comes from a good family. It's like interesting guy that you don't really hear about him much. And he's not on social media, feels like. He's just completely locked in on ball. Old school feel to him, which is probably why you also like him. 
I love that part. The stability thing's huge in the NFL. You know, there's so much going on, and it's extra free time. It's money. It's the uh, pressure of having the whole city on your back. And, you know, I've watched a bunch of guys do it and uh, do it extremely well. And the guys I've, the guys that I've been around took franchises that hadn't been overly successful and just made it, made, took them to the top. And, uh, you know, so I think this guy's going to do the same thing. And I, I laugh. This guy's had the same girlfriend since about the seventh grade. He's just a... He's kind of an old-fashioned. I think he's a lot like Andrew that way. You know, he comes across as kind of an aw shucks guy, but absolutely knows exactly what's going on at all times and bright, 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 and almost uh, almost embar- in an embarrassing way, you know, kind of is careful not to, not, to, not to brag in any way. He has a humility about him that I really, really like that I think will carry serve him well with his teammates and, and uh, in the league and, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just high on this kid. I think it's all in front of him. Yeah. Pac-Man has the last question for you here, Coach. Hey, Coach, you've been on a lot of the greats. Uh, far as you've, been, you've been a pain in my neck. You've cost me some <laughs> playoff money back in Tennessee. <laughs> FYI, I got, I got some resentments, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you've been around a lot of the greats. Um, as far as throwing the ball, what are some of the tangibles that he have um, yeah. as of the guys that you've been around? He has the obvious tangibles of being able to do things off schedule and and uh, and probably the thing he's going to have to do is just learn how to do it on schedule a little bit more and just just progress through reads and stuff. He has a deceivingly strong arm. I think though I think whoever gets him will shorten his stroke down. He's been working on shortening his stroke a little bit this off season and uh, he'll get that stroke a little bit shorter and more compact. And I think he can improve his accuracy, but he has an ability to anticipate. Like uh, like the great ones have, I think that that's going to serve him extremely well. And then I think he has plenty of arm to make all the throws. And uh, so I would say anticipation and arm strength are both going to be really good. I think the accuracy, the make compacting the stroke a little bit, and then just the footwork in the pocket, those are to be things that he'll develop and be, get really good at here in the next couple of years. Yeah, because things you can get away with in college, you can't necessarily get away with yeah, in the NFL, but everybody right. has to get better. Like, that is what the mm-hmm. NFL is. You have to get better. Yep. So saying this guy's going to have to get better, it's like everybody oh, has to get better. It's the men's league. But quarterback, they're saying, you know, you got to be able to hit the layups. you got to be able to hit the gimmies, the gimmies, yeah, the gimmies, the gimmies. He's not going to miss the layups. He, he, this, this guy will not miss the layups. Right, for, every right. layup he, for, for every layup he missed, he hit about two half quarters. So. <laughs> <laughs> Last question I, I here. I lied to you. I lied to you here. Last question okay. from Connor. Coach, I mean, everything you're saying, you can see the Patriots helmet on this table. Uh, and by all accounts, oh. Drake May is coming <laughs> to New England. So this is all music to my ears. And, you know, there's been a lot mm-hmm. of talk about the team that UNC had and kind of how they had a down year last year in comparison to his first year starting. What kind of happened in that situation? And also, you know, they reference how – Drake May had Tez Walker and everything. How much work did they actually get in before they could play together? Because they only played six games together. Yeah, they they didn't get hardly any because it was just kind of up in the air with that ruling, and it was kind of an odd deal. I think that would be another thing to Pac-Man's question. He's a, he's a guy who's adjusted to a bunch of different receivers, and you know, he's only really started two years. So I do think both years they started six nine and one, and then this year we started six and six and zero. Oh. And then faded toward the end, and I think that's a combination of a lot of things. I think if you watched him, he would he would tell he'd be the first to tell you he's got to play better and find a way to win games. But you know, some of it some of it is defense, some of it is special teams. Some a lot goes into those things. And uh, full team. But uh, this 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 kid's gonna this this kid's gonna be fine. All right, we're thankful that you joined us, and I think Patriots fans are jacked. Yeah, I'd say. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not endorsing him going up to New England. You, too bad, to Clyde. Hey, to too bad, play. Clyde. Sucks to suck. He's coming to New England. <laughs> You're gonna have uh, to be a Patriots hey. fan now. It's up to you. <laughs> Tom, Tom did. Tom did stop it. I grew. I grew to love him. So, but uh, cool. it'll be. It'll be. It'll take me a while to put on a Patriots. You're helping yeah, the Patriots hurt. right now. Yes, you, you are. You have helped the Patriots. No. You're yeah, bringing you them back. No. You're bringing them back, Clyde. You're the one that is going to be responsible for bringing greatness back to New England. Thank you so much. <laughs> Way to go, Clyde. I thought you were a Colt, man. Wow. I thought you were a Colt. Appreciate it, Clyde. You're the best. Ladies and gentlemen. You're the best. Hey, Hall of Famer in the future. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Clyde Christensen. Yeah. yeah.